write, I wrote these thrillers, to go back to the thrillers, I wrote them at the very beginning of my career. Um, and I, w I always used to read thrillers as a, from an adole my adolescence all through my 20s. Um, and I had um, I'd, I'd written my first novel. I'd published my, and I'd written, I think I'd published my first novel. And it took about seven or eight years to write because I didn't know what I was doing. And, um, and then my wife was a literary agent and she represented a very good South African thriller writer called James McClure, who wrote brilliantly about South Africa under apartheid. And he came to dinner one evening and he, um, he, he revealed that he usually wrote his thrillers in about four weeks. Um, mm -hmm. And so I didn't take any notice of it at the time, but I remember going to bed and saying to my wife, I wonder if I could beat that. <laughs> um, and indeed, I wrote my first thriller in, in 10 days. Brilliant. Um, yeah. So having, having taken eight years to write a novel, I then write a thriller in 10 days. And then, so I thought, well, I have to have a pseudonym in case it's always going to be like this, and it's always going to take me eight years to write a novel and 10 days to write a thriller. Um, and I quite enjoyed the fact that the, the, the that there are certain givens, certain formal constraints within the thriller genre, or the one that I adopted. Um, but then, after writing three or four, two things happened, really. One was that the, the formal constraints seemed to press too much on me, that I'd invented various things for the main character and people around him, and I was then stuck with them. Mm -hmm. And the second was that... Um, you know, my novels as Julian Barnes were more successful than my thrillers. And so it wasn't a question of I was writing these thrillers in order to support Flaubert's Parrot. I was writing Flaubert's Parrot in order to support these thrillers. And it, it really did seem upside down. So, so I stopped.